Hey everyone, welcome to Group Text. Uh, to be honest, nothing makes me happier than to have someone willingly want to come back on my podcast. Jackie Jackie Tone is back today to talk about her latest role as Esther in the seriously mega hit Nobody Wants This, which is now streaming on Netflix. All I can say is binge it and you're welcome. Jackie is a comedian, an actress, a singer, songwriter, and she is here for God bless her round two. Welcome back to group text. You must have a very short memory or be completely fearless or a masochist. Yeah, I, I have a I have a penchant for misery. That's good. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Well, no, you I don't know what world you're living in that you're not a delight, but I'm not subscribing to that. Ask my <laughs> <laughs> Ask my office. I mean, listen, sure, but I had a great time last time and I'll have a great time this time. Try me. Well, first of all, congratulations on Nobody Wants This and officially Thank picked you. up for a second season. Yeah, dude, we came out, we we aired October 20, uh, September 26th and we found out we got the season two pick up exactly two weeks later. What I've been saying to people, because I binged it, because it was recommended to me. What I've been telling people mm-hmm. is it's a palate cleanser and gives you no anxiety. And with everything that's on now, you got the Menendez, you've got Perfect Couple, you have uh, uh, all of them are so right. angst ridden. This is like, it just makes you happy. It's impossibly easy to watch. It's just so nice. And I think for um, especially women like us, but it's like it's not – it's a love story and it's, of course, a romantic comedy and it's incredibly written and acted. But it's not – and I love The Kissing Booth, but it's that's not what it is. It's not like – it's not necessarily catered to young people. And I think what's so exciting about this for all of us is like – We're telling, I mean, listen, they're not geriatric, but like we're telling the love story of people in their late 30s or whatever their ageless age is. And so it's, I think it's speaking to a lot of people who are, you know, trying to still find love and not, and aren't like washed up just because they're not 22. Right. And, but again, I found it to be, it was my deep breath. Like I knew I was going to have fun. And it was funny. And my fiance, Steve, who is 63, loved it. You know what's funny? My parents, um, speaking to that, my parents live in, obviously, like you didn't know this even without knowing, my parents live in a development in Florida. And (laughs) please tell me it's, tell me it's in Boca. Of course, baby. It's, I mean, it's in like the Boca. Um, West Palm, Lake Worth. It's like in that whole, it's all the Oh, so they can go and, and eat with the wasps. Right. And, and then come back and, and be with their people. But what they really do is go to Flakowitz, eat with their people, and then come back and be with their people. But Got it. Either, <laughs> either way, um, yeah, they, having nothing to do with my being on the show, my mom's like, everyone's talking about the show. And then, of course, she can't wait to tell them that I'm also on it. But I'm like, these people are in their 60s and 70s, and they are binging this romantic comedy. I mean, it's bonkers. Well, and it's funny. It's... You're right. It's highly watchable. It's just so exciting. And you know, when we were making it, we were excited, but you never know. You know this. We produce things and make things and you just, all you can do is hope anybody watches it. And then you end up being, I'm hearing, I'm hearing that the show is number one in the world. What does the title mean? Because it, you the title doesn't really describe it until you watch it. Like when you watch other shows, like Monster, the Menendez story, we know what its, it's the subject know, matter is. Of course. It's so interesting with titles. And I honestly don't know how they do it. I think they focus group them and they, you know, I think with Netflix, so much of it is not AI, but it's like it's algorithms. It's like it's pooling answers. It's all of that. Um, none of which as a entertain. I don't – that's not my business. I don't understand. But I look at like Squid Game or Bridgerton or like what none of these things really mean anything. 
And then you watch it and like now you love it and so it makes sense. Because you know, I, I don't know if you know this, we were originally called Shiksa. No, I did not know that. Yes. We were originally called Shiksa, but I guess that that word is – a lot of people don't know what it means. And then of the people who know what it means, some people say that it's um, derogatory. A lot of people are like, oh, I, I never heard it used derogatorily my whole life. Me so I just Right. So I just didn't know that. Um, but either way, they said that they weren't good. They didn't call it that because um, people didn't know what it was. Um, and Nobody Wants This is the name of the girl's podcast on the show. But and you don't know that. Until right, you course. watch the show. Of course. But that's, you know, it's... Okay, listen. you play Esther, who is fucking hilarious. Tell us about Esther. Piece of work. Um, Esther is an intense, fiercely loyal, very loving, caring mom, friend, wife... And, opinionated. I mean, baby, opinion, opinion, an opinionista, if you will. <laughs> I, I just, I have to say that again. Um, so, but yeah, she, she's an intense gal, but she also, I think what's interesting is we meet her when she's like in overdrive defense of her best friend who was going to marry this guy. And now he's literally out at a bar days later, not only n- not with the best friend, but her husband is there. So yeah, sure. She's ma- she's she, a- she, just, she was supposed to marry her, your, your, the character's brother-in-law. My best friend was supposed to marry my brother-in-law. And it was always the four of us did everything together. Me, my husband, his brother, and my best friend. And our, my life is, I'm like, what is going on? She's hysterical crying to me. She doesn't, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I barely even know they broke up. And he's like at a bar with some random girl and my husband is there. And so that sort of answers the question of why she's flying off the handle screaming from the car. Also, it's That, by the way, I don't want to get that as like one of like the introduction of your character screaming from a car and honking a horn is the best. I mean, it says everything about her. And it's funny because like the the – it, 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 of course it's heightened. I mean, it's a TV show. And so, you know, there's all these people like, oh, she's really mad. It's like, well, yeah, what? what's the other option? She pulls up and she's like, honey, come outside. It's very captivating television. Mm-hmm. She texts her husband calmly from the car. Like, it, she has to be bugging. Like, it's TV. So how did you get the role? Um, I'm taking a cute picture of us. Oh, my. Or cute. Um... I auditioned. So I initially, I my my agent was like, "Hey, there's this show, it's tentatively titled, titled Shiksa, and they uh, would like you to try out for the Rebecca role, which was Adam's ex, which is the right. rabbi's ex." And then um, I've been best friends with Kristen Bell for sixty-five years, for since two thousand and three. Jesus, um, and. I knew she was. It's the best she has ever looked. Oh, it's sick. Like, what's she happening? looks. I know. Uh, yeah, exactly. She's like, what laser? She, no, honestly, she what? she's crazy. She doesn't do anything. I mean, she does the late. She does but, like the facials and everything, but I don't, babe, I'll find out for you. Cause I do not know what skincare regime she's just like, because it, yeah. she's, she's always been really pretty, but it's another it's level. Another level. Also, she's always been very pretty, but she's also always looked very young. Like when she was 24 or something, she was on Broadway playing like truly 13. Like you put the girl in pin curls and she was a child up until like being 35. Um, So now she's like a woman. It's incredible. All of that to say. So you're um, her very good friend. Yeah. So I called her or I was like at her house. We were going on a hike and I was like, dude, I got, um, you know, she's a a lot of friends, a lot of people that we both know trying out for the show. And I'm like, I, I got an audition for your show, but it's for Rebecca. And she was like, oh, okay. I think you, you should read for Esther. There's like this sister-in-law that's like a nightmare. And I was like, yeah, duh. And so then my agents were like, hey, uh, let's do, let's wait for the Esther role to come out. And then a few weeks later, I auditioned for that. And I didn't find out for like a month. 
Oh. And I didn't want to like text Kristen and ask and put her on the spot. Because of course, like, I'm hopeful, but also I, I happen to know there are a lot of people that she knows I know, that tried out and didn't get it. So it's like, you never want to make it weird. But I was like, let's go. And this was one of those times where all the stars aligned and the part was exactly right. And I happened, you know, it was, it was nice. Nice little, nice little combo it, it was Taylor. It, it really does feel Taylor made. She's Jewish. She's very funny. She's tough. But she is also a meddler. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. She's a shit stirrer. What, which part, of, which part was closest to you? Are you a shit disturber? Or are you, I always just say to my friends, I don't, I don't shit disturb, but I'm always very interested in what's going on. I am beyond. I am beyond. I'm not only interested. I mean, I am, I am nothing like Esther. Like I would never do ever do any of the things she did. I wouldn't handle them the way she handles them, but like at our core, the characteristics are the same, the fiercely loyal and loving my friends. And, you know, I would be devastated if one of my, if this happened to one of my best friends, but at the same time, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pull up, I would, you know, roll up on them in a bar. But yeah, I mean, I'm a meddler. I think I'm, I'm not especially great at keeping my mouth shut when I see something like being wrong. Like here's an example. I'll walk into a Starbucks and the person in front of me will shut the door in my face and I'm clearly right behind them. And so I won't like call them out, but I'll, I'll go like, Oop, Oh, right. Oop, right behind you. You know, like I'll like in a, in a cute ish way, but just to be like, there are other humans on the planet kind of thing. But like a lot of people would just be like, think to themselves. Okay. Rude. But I kind of have to speak to it. I could work on that. That's a me thing. No, but I, I do the same thing. It's like, oh, my God. I, but see, I go more with the, like, sarcasm. Like, oh, thank you. Oh, I've done that, too. But that's, like, um, that's like a little bit of a different one. But I'll, I'll do yeah. that, like, okay, thanks. Like, Jesus. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, this, and we start to touch on this. The show explores the, the common role, you know, very common topics of religion and family and, I mean, Religion always plays a big part or can play a big part in family dynamics. Sure. Now politics play a big part. Which part of that sort of spoke to you? Because, you know, I don't know about your world, but my fiance is a lapsed Catholic. Yes. Yeah, so and- really? Not, I mean, he's, he's not my fiance, but he, my boyfriend of three years who's, uh, the plan is my life partner. I love this guy and he's the best. He, but he is an interesting one because his grandpa's Jewish, was Jewish. And when I first met my boyfriend, I was like, you're Jewish. I hate to tell you. Yeah. And he was like, no, he was like an altar boy. But his grandpa was Jewish. And then his grandma, this Italian woman converted for him, for the grandpa. Right. So then his mom was raised completely Jewish, but then she converted to Catholicism for his dad. Okay, I'll follow yeah. that. I mean, hard. But, I mean, I have to draw you a stick figure family tree. But we're like, with Steve's family, oh no. Right. Like, every Sunday, ultra boy. Um, right. So the best is, and I don't know if this happens with your your relationship, he will ask me questions, but mm-hmm. he might actually know more than me. Like, about, he, like about Judaism? Yes, because oh my god, yes, it, it's but it's embarrassing. <laughs> but why does he know more than you? I don't know. I don't know if because we started dating, he thought like that he had to like bone up. He like looked up Sukkot. I couldn't really tell you even what that Neither is. Neither could but I. That's okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't really. I don't really know um, what 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 a majority of the. What goes on? I mean, I, I know actually a lot of them, but yeah. Sukkot, I, I just learned about Sukkot. It's like the har- it's like a harvest festival. I'm sure it involves food. Uh, well, listen, do they, don't they all? Exactly. So he says to me last week, he's like, can you explain to me uh, Yom Kippur or Yom Kippur as you're supposed to say it, but I always say it wrong. I go, well, let me put it in your terms. We think about the last year. We think about what we could have been doing better. We apologize for that and sort of think forward. And he's looking at me. I go, 
basically it's confession, but we've narrowed it down to a 24 hour period, which is much more efficient. That's amazing <laughs> and exactly right. Yeah. I'm like, we're just so, more efficient. What do you yeah. want from me? What do you want from me? What am I going to go every week? Get real. But he did growing up. Like I know. literally. I know. I know. It's, it's crazy. But you do have to, it's just very interesting that those things can get tense. Oh, yeah. They, they, they totally can. I mean, I think um, it's, a, I, I find it important to, in, in a partner for me, I think it's, it's more important to agree on like the big the big issues, like, you know, um, uh, none of don't which kill. I'll be, no, yeah. None of which I'll be hopping into and this light, lovely group text pod. But no. like, yeah, I think <laughs> when we agree with like, you definitely aren't going to want to be dating someone that you'd argue with at a Thanksgiving dinner. So it's like, you know, we agree on, on the things that matter. And I was raised Jewish and I'm so proud to be Jewish, but I, um, it, it wasn't mega important to me to have a, Jewish partner. Yeah. It's it, me either. So that's what I find dog. that very, I find, but I find that very interesting because it is the polar opposite of Esther. Oh yeah, for sure. The polar opposite of Esther. Yeah. I mean, they didn't ask about my personal opinions before they hired me. So that was, that was good. They just said, you don't have to be like Esther. I was like, oh, thank God. Or what you say is my personal opinions are whatever you need them to be. Ah, uh, baby girl, don't you know? I have been doing this since I was nine years old. I'm in my 40s. I'm like, yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Happy to be here. Of course, that's how I feel. You get to work with Timothy Simons, who many of us know from Veep, who can stand there and be a scene stealer without uttering a word. He plays your husband. What what was your chemistry with him? Was it there from the minute you walked in? He's the best. You know, I think with um, sort of fellow wise asses, it's like game recognizing game kind of immediately. And like you lob out a little softball to see like what you're playing with socially. I'm not consciously doing that, nor do I think he is. But like you say a certain thing and then you see how it bounces off people and you're like, ah, yes, my people. And you sort of like narrow down who's going to be able to play and do bits and um, – Tim and I get along so great. And we, we, there were a lot of times in the show where like if they didn't call cut at the end of a scene, Tim and I would just stay in character and just keep talking. And of course we thought, well, when we watch the show, it'll, the scene will end where the pages ended, but oh no, Tim and I just carry on like a bunch of lunatics just chatting away. And it's really, it was fun to watch the show because we didn't know what they would keep in and what, it was great. Well, and he has Physically, so, he's so funny. Fun. Yeah, because he's like that, six four or something. He's yeah. enormous. Yeah, and lanky, and yeah. the body's kind of all over the place. And what I loved was Esther didn't see that anymore. She saw him for who he is. If that makes some sense, she was so used to that. Yeah, she she absolutely loves him. She thinks, and I think that's another thing that's really it was important to me in the show for. Esther to be multidimensional, right? She's um, a lot of things. She's opinionated. No, she's, and great. No. she's great. She's we great. We talked about all those things. But also, she loves her husband. She's fiercely loyal. She, even that night, like, they're cute. They still have sex. They're, like, having little moments. He ate a gummy. They're, like, they play with each other. Like, that room, that moment when he's, like, putting the sock on his junk, and she's, like, yeah. okay, we'll be, all right. And it's, like, you can see how sweet they are together. So it's not just, like... Why are why are they together? Oh, no. I wanted it to be very clear that these people love each other and that they have a like, multi leveled right. marriage relationship. What was the first table read like? Because it's such a strong ensemble. Oh, so cool! It was so cool. I mean, I think it was so exciting for me. Um, I hadn't been part of something in this way since Glow. And so I've done, you know, a movie here and this and, you know, kept myself afloat. But to be back in a room after COVID, so glow going away and then COVID and then strikes and then more strikes. And then it's just finally, like, you can't imagine chills. You can't imagine what a weight was lifted and how good it felt to just like, A, be back in the room with all the people and 
for this feeling of, okay, we're coming back out of something. We're post, I mean, of course there's still COVID, but we're post COVID, we're post the strikes. And it was just really amazing. And the energy in the room was amazing. And we felt from jump that like Netflix was there and the studio was there and it just felt like, ooh, everybody kind of feels strongly about this and wants this to work. And I think we saw immediately, even at the table read, the chemistry between Kristen and Adam. And everyone was like, oh, shit. Like, oh. let's see. Yeah. I mean, it was palpable. Palpable. Truly. It, I just keep, I, there's so much I want to ask. Okay. So Los Angeles and dating in Los Angeles is very much its own character in the show. A hundred percent. How is it different than dating in New York? What did you, you know, discover? I because I I have to get more comfy. There we go. That's okay. I, oh, horse of a different color. Glenn, do you mind moving a little bit so I can speak with Melissa? Oh, look at the baby. This is my special guy named Glenn, who's two hundred years old. I was gonna say he looks he looks like a senior citizen. Yeah, he's a senior. He's a he's a senior man. Oh, um, he's the greatest. Um. But he's like, uh, put me down. You should see his. his, his oh my god, his, he's like about to fall asleep. Um, wait, I forgot the question because Glenn interrupted and I had to reconfigure. Uh, dating in LA versus dating oh. in New York because no. it's very much an LA dating situation. Well, here's the thing. I. I never really, not that I never dated in New York, but I was, I was always a grown up in Los Angeles. So I have lived here my whole dating life. So I don't know a lot about, I mean, unsurprisingly, I did a play called Jutopia in New York from, I mean, I did it in LA yeah. for a couple of years, then in New York for a few years. And I dated in New York then, but I was so young. I was like, 23 and 24 and running around the city and doing gigs at CBGBs and there weren't even dating apps at the time. So I don't really know. I only really know dating in LA and this show captures it really well. I mean, that moment where Kristen's on that brief date and the guy's like talking to her about getting headshots, that actually happened to me. And you're like, oof, this is a tough, Did tough time to start be enter to enter this business in your 40s. But yeah. Did you, when you were dating, um, because it just made me laugh, do you ever, did you ever do any of those things? I once had, because I had already had my son, had pretended my phone was buzzing, picked it up and pretended it was the babysitter and I had to go. Oh my God, of course. You have to absolutely, you have to pull out every trick in the book. I mean, I used to tell friends so I wouldn't have to fake it. I would go pee and text them and say, call me in five minutes. Yeah. And then the phone would actually ring because I was always really scared. It's funny. My boyfriend just did, I think it was a Southwest commercial, but that was the exact thing where he doesn't want to like donate to these people coming out of the school. So he pretends he's on the phone. And while he's pretending, the phone rings. I've, I've seen and, it. Right. And, there, and then Southwest is like, want to get away? Anyway, I'm so afraid that that's going to happen because it's happened to me where I've been faking. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I cannot mess this up again. You will be actually calling me. My phone it, will ring and I will the, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. The key is to come out of the bathroom already on the phone. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yes. I see what you're saying. And then it's like sort of an emergency that happened while you were peeing. Oh my God. My God. baby. But exactly. Do you feel, so, the ba- so you would say like the babysitter had to go or something, right? Yes. You had to but I had a child. No, of course. But I'm saying so, like. <laughs> I would be, because I always get afraid of like, if I need to get out of a situation, I'd be afraid to be like, oh, my dog, something happened to my dog or something because I don't want to, I don't want to give a Kanahara. I'm too scared. So Me that too. Say, God forbid, poo, poo, poo. And then I wouldn't want the dog to get sick. Right. Me too. But I also thought, would always think the universe wants me not to murder someone. Yeah, that's right. So I figured it was balancing that he was actually saving me for not actually stabbing someone with a fork. And that someone would be him. Yes. I see. Mm-hmm. So I just think, because I keep saying we were just talking about it last night. Oh, by the way, my fiance had dental surgery and I was driving him home. And for some reason, like every five minutes on the way home, he would just go, 
Muzzle top. <laughs> like, who are was, you? was it because he was like on medication? Yes, but <laughs> it's really cute. I love I love when they're out of it and they like just my boyfriend got his wisdom teeth pulled and I have the videos of him just being in another planet. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Going? I'm like, but I would I wish he was screaming Mazel Tov over and over. Oh, that video would be priceless. I know if I wasn't driving and Affair. there wasn't construction, Affair. I would have I did think about doing that. And I just say for the people at home, you did the right thing. For the people at home, yes, I did the right thing. Amongst my friends, of course, I did it. not. You blew it. You blew it. One hundred percent. I get that. I get that. So, the, uh, Esther's daughter's bat mitzvah is a main storyline. First of all, were you bat mitzvahed? You know, I was, girl. You know, I wasn't. Was. Really? No, I wasn't. You, did, you didn't. I think we may have talked about this last time. Did you not yeah. want to be? Never discussed it. I okay. went from. We did confirmation. And then two, three years later, I was a debutante. So Wait, I got a lot. information for Jews? Basically for people who skip their bar bat mitzvah. I never and you even have, heard of that. I only heard of Well, I think it's also a way to get money to keep people in, well, not Sunday school for us. It was Wednesday school. Interesting. But did, So did you get bat mitzvah? I did get bat mitzvahed uh, at Sands Atlantic Beach on Long Island. That was our venue. And my theme was Hollywood, obviously. And, um, but it was like pretentious a little bit because I was a kid actor. So the tables weren't like famous movies. The tables were like the director's. The cinematographers, <laughs> Melissa. Like, and the dais where all the kids sat was the cast. And of course I had like a director's chair I sat in. I was a, I was a piece of work. I'll tell you that. So what's changed now? Have you been, have any of your friends, have you been to any recent bar bat mitzvahs? You know, I haven't been to a, I used to call them mitz. I haven't been to a mitz in ye, forever. And I, I've been to more than there are days in the year. Like when I was a kid, I went, I don't know about hundreds, but at least a hundred. Like, and I used to keep all the invitations. They were gorgeous. I had like books and books of all the invitations, but I haven't been to one in forever. Why? What's the deal? Are they? Well, because Cooper went through, you know, when he was 13 and going through all that, um, all of his friends, they, in LA, like there was one where the entertainment was the Laker girls. Stop. Well, it's every 13-year-old boy's dream cast. Of course. Yeah. I remember when I was a teenager, well, when I was doing the bat mitzvahs, we weren't in the five towns on Long Island. So we weren't like, you know, we were, I would say we were like middle class. And so like my mom's friend who was my agent at the time, she like made my centerpieces. And instead of wearing a dress, like all the girls were getting these $5,000 custom dresses from this woman, Dahlia, in town. And I, we rented an ivory tuxedo with a fuchsia cummerbund and bow tie from the local Oceanside tuxedo. And that's what I wore. I mean, this was a $50 rental. So, But how very, how very oh, Hollywood best. movie star. The absolute best. My mom. Very Faye Dunaway. Very, very like Diane Keaton even. My mom is a genius. It was her idea. She was like, what about wearing a tuxedo like all the boys do? And I was like, done. Brilliant idea. You're an actress, a comedian. I and I don't mean to be hesitant, but it's just it's so much runs through my brain, especially talking to you. Like I could go off on all these different tangents. So I'm trying to make it make sense for the podcast and we don't go down some random rabbit hole because <laughs> I would love to do that. So you're an actress, a songwriter, a comedian. If you were only left to be able to do one of those things, and I know it's asking you to kill a baby. Which would you do? It's asking me to kill a lot of babies. Um, but I will say my number one dream has always been, continues to be, will always be. Well, maybe it'll change, but it hasn't changed from nine to 85, which I currently am. I look incredible. Um, th- I want, I've always wanted to be some version of the nanny. Like, just have a half-hour multicam sitcom. I come down the stairs as a studio audience. We got jokes. We got bits. We're doing the thing. 
I know those shows are very hard to make work anymore, um, but that's always sort of been the dream. And I'm doing a version of it, certainly, on Nobody Wants This and absolutely living my dreams now. But since that's always been the number one goal, I would have to say that the other things would have to be the babies to kill. Like, I love making music and I love doing comedy. And I love, I mean, I love doing all these things, but I would have to say it's... TV star has been like what I've been writing like since I was using crayons. So let's just stick with that. Yeah. And, but there's a difference between the multi-camera, which is an audience. I know. Versus the single camera where you kind of are and, now. And, and you've I done, love, you, you love working live. I love working live. See now that's sort of my trick. My trick is like, that's how I could sort of keep the live stand up going. That And I'm sort of only killing half of that baby. Cause if I do multi-cam, but I love single cam and I love, I mean, I just love making TV. It's my absolute favorite. It's my, it's my favorite. Thank you for not being a movie snob. Okay. I have a little game. I love, I love movies too. I just like TV. I do too, but being a TV child and our whole business, like my whole thing is we don't like less movies, more TV, no reading. Mm. Just let's watch TV. So funny. Less movies, more TV, less, no reading. Yeah. No, Says no the reading. big reader. But it's true. No. I love TV. And now we're in a, le- we're in a, a time where we're we have era. great TV. Great. True. And also actors now, especially big actors, are starting to realize how good the TV life is. Oh, of course. And I think that, yeah, you don't have to like go to Iceland for nine months a year. It's like, Ex- yeah, just make a, yeah. Well, and you shoot more than three pages a day, mm-hmm. which, yeah, you know. TV is, yeah, TV's great. TV's awesome. And by the way, the multi-camera TV shows are like the best job ever. I know. Ugh. Except for there's one better, game show host. Uh, by the way, that's on the short list, lest we be confused. That is on the shortest of lists because I hosted a show called um, Best Leftovers Ever on on Netflix a couple of years ago um, that was so fun and so incredible. And I've always wanted to, to, to host and Nat just cracked me open even more where I was like, Oh, this is the gig. And it's very specific. It's not like, you know, it's so fun. It's two days every two weeks. Yeah. This was, we shot the whole season in eight days. Same, conceptually the same idea. Exactly. (laughs) Four days, one week, four days, the next week. And we had a whole season of a show. Yeah. Could you do three, four, you do four a day gorgeous it's the best you can have a life i know which is I also the best do, i sometimes do that uh there's a game show called i don't host obviously but um well not obviously but there's a, a show called uh, 25 words or less meredith Vieira i've hosts. done 25 words yeah, or less i was great in rehearsal and a complete failure on tv oh it's so frustrating when that happens i but with that you shoot six a day yeah and it's so delightful and i am I, that show taught me that I am publicly competitive. I, I will not, I don't, I don't keep my absolutely aggro competitive nature under wraps just cause I'm on TV. Apparently I will still scream at people. Um, so fun. Well, if you ever want a good laugh, my family did a uh, celebrity family feud. I was going to say the feud, the feud, but this was back when Al Roker was hosting your kid. Al Roker hosted the feud. He hosted Celebrity Family Feud a million I years ago. Oh, it I is, it'll, it's hilarious. And you can see my irritation level with my one cousin all through it because I thought his I answers were so stupid. Oh, that's so funny. And of course you didn't hide that. You were like, just because no. I'm on TV, I'm not going to hide that I think you're an idiot. Oh, that's so no. funny. Okay, let's get to the game. It's called Oy Ve, What Did She Say? Great. I'm going to give you a definition and you have to tell me the Yiddish word or phrase for it. Oh, cute. We're going backwards. Okay. A man, but one who goes out of his way to do the right thing. A mensch. Someone who is not Jewish. Goyim or shiksa or shagitz. Ooh, I've never heard that one. Shagitz is the boy shiksa. Did not know that. That's the name of the Nobody Wants This cast text thread. 
Shiksa <laughs> slash Shagets. Go on. That's hilarious. A snack or to eat? Um, nosh. A nosh. Mm-hmm. A nasty person. Oh, Fabison? I That's excellent. My answer that I had, someone gave me was schmuck, which I always know. Oh, schmuck is good, but that's not necessarily nasty. But yeah, I mean, a schmuck is like, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Okay, like but someone's this is trying a- to sell you a used car, then they're, pe- yeah, like a schmuck, sure. Okay, now I have a question because a friend of mine always used to word, use the word schmageggy. I, schmig- I don't know if schmageggy is r- real. Okay. I think schmageggy is like, but I've heard it too, isn't it like, um, like a like if you don't know what this is called, the thing between your phone, it's a schmageggy. Oh, I always heard it like, ugh, he's a schmageggy. But I'm glad to know oh, that it's just a made no. up word. I, I don't know. I, I can't. Um, wait, I have one for you. Okay. Unless there's more. Do you have more? I have. I mean, uh, literally to pee, but a young whippersnapper who is smart, who is a smart aleck. A pisher. Oh, a pisher, of course. Come on, of course. I was going to ask you if you could translate. I I know what it means, but just for fun. When, I'm not going to give you the context, but my mom used to say to me all the time, mit dein tuchus mekenisch tanzen in zwei chasenes. Okay, well, I never spoke Yiddish. My parents never spoke Yiddish. I think my grandparents spoke Yiddish, but I did hear the word tuchus. Yes, you did. So using my... Yeah, but using my deductive skills of my education, would it be like, get off your ass, you lazy something? Oh, I live. So it means with one ass, you can't dance at two weddings. Oh. Is that, Yiddish is so fun because everything is like, everything is a play on words, even if it's ne- like... Like I would say to my mother, I would be, oh, I had an audition or something, but I also wanted to go to the school dance. She my mid dine took his mechanic dance, and you with one ass, you can't dance at two weddings. I love so that. I know Yiddish is so chewy and good. It's so good. So what's next? I know we're doing we're starting season two, but you always have a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. So season two, we're super excited about. I did a Jewish summer camp movie called Floaters. <laughs> um, we don't have a, we don't have a release date yet, but that was really fun and is is something to look out for. Um, yeah, and just keeping keeping busy doing um, Kelly and Mark and live with Kelly in New York in a little bit, and just just making the rounds and wanting everybody to watch the show. You know, it is a funny situation to not have to tell people to watch your show. That's certainly a, a, that's a new one for me. Oh, everybody's already, it's like insane. They're already watching. It's nuts. Tell me about it. You're not out begging. It's crazy. Melissa, it's, it's crazy. New, it's new. I like it. It's new. Or as we used to say, um, one of my friends always says, uh, uh, I laughed, I cried, two thumbs up, a must see. A must see. I laughed, I cried, a must see. I love it. I, two thumbs up. I laughed, I cried, a must see. Jackie, love. I adore you. I adore this show. Nobody wants this now streaming on Netflix, renewed for season two. And I personally cannot recommend it enough. It just makes you happy. Thank you, Mamala. That means a lot to me, especially coming from you, fellow strong Jewish woman supporting this show. I appreciate it. It is brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mama. 